I surrender all and all. I open my heart that you may reign in my life. I open my heart that you may reign in my life. I open my heart that you may reign in my life. We we ni we ma fa fa na ni sui we we ni we ma ba ba. chosen us yes, Lord. so that we can be the apple of your eye we choose you one more time Oh, 
Oh, we bless you, Jesus. The devil will have wasted my life. The enemy will have succeeded if not for you that was on my side. The plans of the wicked, they would have succeeded against me if not for you that was on my side. Sickness and disease will have finished me. Let worship rise from within you. He's calling you, oh God, my old He's calling you, oh God, ah, Malabosa, dear Hafala. You are God alone. Time began. You are on the throne. You are God alone. You alone are God. You are God alone. You are on the throne. We worship you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Come on somebody. Are you excited? Lift up your hands above your head and give Jesus a clap. Let's have a shout in the house. Give Jesus a clap. Is that the best you have this morning? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. He's very good. Is it good to you? Yes, yes. The Lord is good. He's very good. He's very good. He's very good. The Lord is good. He's very good. He's very good for me. Thank you, Lord. Please, you may take your seat. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 133. Psalms 133. Psalms 133. He said, Behold, how good. And how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. How good and how pleasant is it for brethren 
to dwell together in unity. Amen. I'm not speaking about unity, but I just want to raise a concern that sometimes is our unity of faith even in the communication of that which God wants to do with us that brings us to the place of experiencing the hand of God. Amen. And so we need to know that God is aware of our unity. Is It is key to Him. It is key to God that every time we gather we stay together in unity praise the lord it is god's agenda that we stay together in unity unity of purpose unity of worship unity of everything glory to god all right so let's do our reading we are on part three of kingdom prosperity Kingdom Prosperity Part 3 and today we are talking about your physical prosperity. If you can give me Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7 and verse 24, that's where we begin this morning. All right, it's projected. If you can see, please let's read together. I want to go. We are reading all the way to verse 29. He says, For there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. He could not be hidden. Next verse. He says, For a woman whose young daughter had and clean spirits heard about him and she came and fell at his feet i want you to see the progression jesus does not want to be noticed he doesn't want to be seen and then somebody hears about him and their daughter have a, has a problem and they come and they fall at his feet next verse And the woman was who? Somebody say a Greek. That means she was a Gentile. She was not a Jew. A Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Now I want you to notice the word kept asking. That means it was not one request. It was not two she kept on asking she was persistent in her asking she kept asking him to heal her daughter she kept asking she was persistent and she kept asking that you heal my daughter next verse and it looks like our projection is misbehaving today so uh, let me try and use my bible okay Next verse, verse 27. The woman was a Greek. No, verse 27. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the bread or to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. I want you to pause there. Today, I really want to just calm down and teach. One of the reasons is that my nose is disturbing me. And the second one is because I want you to understand. All right? So he said, it is not good to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Let the children be filled first. Now, let me ask you. From where we began, what was the discussion? The discussion is the healing of a daughter 
that is demon possessed but Jesus is talking about bread and giving it out to somebody who is not a child in the kingdom next verse 28 and she answered and she said to him yes Lord yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children crumbs what a faith what a faith. Next verse. Then he said to her, For this saying, For what you just said now, Go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. The first thing uh, I want to say from this scripture is that healing is to us bread that is to us it is God's provision to his children healing to those who are in the kingdom is bread are you listening are you listening just the way your little daughter or your little son if you have one would come to you and say daddy mommy i am hungry it is your responsibility to provide food for your children is that okay now spiritually speaking jesus is saying healing is bread for the children of the kingdom and so when we come asking for it it is god's responsibility to provide our healing are you listening i want to be very intentional with the scriptures i read today and so the anchor scripture of our teaching on prosperity is that john 2 let's read it that John chapter 2 um, chapter 1 verse 2 he says beloved I wish that above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health he says even as your soul prospereth so it is God's desire that as you prosper financially and as you grow spiritually you also prosper in your health are you following because it is impossible for anybody to sustain money with ill health let me say this there is no amount of wealth that sickness cannot finish I have seen families lose assets, lose land, lose everything that they had to sickness. And so God is aware that if you prosper financially, without you prospering in your bodily health, your bodily health is going to siphon away your finances and so for you to be whole in your prosperity God's desire is that you begin from the spirit being prosperous in your spiritual growth and then prosper in your physical health and then prosper financially let me say a few things before we get into the teaching the soundness of your physical body determines the level of your spiritual soundness the soundness how sound you were in your physical body determines your spiritual soundness there is 
if somebody is bedridden, they are not able to pray, they are not able to read their Bible, they are not able to follow on many other things. Your sound health is the determinant of your spiritual stamina. So that if the devil attacked your health, he has succeeded in a way in attacking your physical, your, your physical health and also your spiritual stamina. Praise the Lord. I said, praise God. You have to answer me today. We are in a class. I want to really, really come down and teach. So if you are physically afflicted, it means your spiritual life is affected. There are people who can't come to church. They are physically challenged. Did you see what happened to, to us during COVID? The government shut down. The way we say we are powerful, they said no gathering and we all obeyed because when your physical health is affected your spiritual stamina is as well affected number two when health is affected your wealth begins to deplete you need to know this so that by the time the enemy is attacking you with ill health you know what he really is after. Praise the Lord. When your health, your bodily health is affected, your wealth begins to deplete. And so Satan knows that sometimes he doesn't need to come after your finances. He can come after your health and your health will affect your finances. If every day you're going to the hospital, how many of you know that hospitals are not cheap? Every essential thing is not cheap in life except oxygen that is being given by God. When people know that this thing you need, it, that's why food is expensive. That's why hospitals are expensive because you cannot do without it. You can do without clothes, but you can't do without food. And so the person selling it knows whatever price they put, it is you will rise to them. They don't need to come down to you. And so the devil knows that he can attack your health. And in essence, your finances will begin to deplete. There are people who were doing very well in life until one family member was attacked. And they now need to send that person to the hospital. Do you know how much is chemotherapy? One session? 35,000. And somebody needs to do two sessions a week. Or even one session a week. Those are four sessions in a month. No matter how much you have as a family, that is not sustainable. Are you following? Number three. God cannot achieve much with an unhealthy body. This is the reason why we need to talk about our health and our prosperity as far as health is concerned. God cannot achieve much. There is little that God himself can do with somebody whose body is unhealthy that's why when you look at scriptures keenly everybody God called into ministry it was at the age of 30 Are you, did you not ask yourself why God is not with calling people at the age of 120 he knows that by the time they are at 120 and he needs them to go to the mountain for 21 days to pray and fast and their knees are knocking each other as they stand up from the seat. Nothing much can be achieved. That they need to get a chair and sit here to preach a sermon for two hours. I was privileged to sit close to Dr. Maurice Seluro in these last years of his ministry. He would teach sitting down. And, and we will have to put a seat for him to sit down and, and 
continue talking. God knows he can't do much with the body that is afflicted. Are you following? This is why you must pay attention. This is why one of the major assignments of Christ was to heal the sick. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And what did he do? He went about doing good and healing all that were sick. Delivering all that were under the oppression of the devil. Because sickness is oppression. So, we come to a conclusion that your health is God's priority. Alright? Please say with me, my health. Say it loud like you believe what you're saying. Say, my health is God's priority. He wants to heal you, to keep you healed, to make you stay healed. So, Acts 10, 38 that I just quoted right now. That God anointed him. The reason why God anointed Christ is so that he can go about healing the sick. Most of the times you will hear and Jesus went into a quiet place and the multitude followed them and they brought all that were sick and he healed all of them. It was a major assignment for Christ. It was a major assignment that he knew when God wants to use a people, he must set them free from something that would hamper their usefulness. Are you with me? Your healing is God's priority. Let me show you that from scripture. Okay? Psalms 103. Let's begin from verse 1 quickly. I told you I want to be very intentional about the scriptures I read today. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Next verse quickly. You can give us the new King James. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. L look at the progression. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then verse 3, he begins to enumerate the benefits of the Lord. He says, Number one benefit is that the Lord forgives you of all your iniquity. That is the number one benefit we have when we come to Christ. That our sins are forgiven. He does not remember them anymore. We are made righteous. He takes our filthiness and gives us the righteousness of Christ. It's our number one benefit when we come to the Lord. And then number two, he says, what does he do? Come on, somebody read with me. Who heals all your world? How many diseases are left unhealed? He heals all your diseases. He heals all your diseases. So God's desire and priority for you is that you do not just get healed, that you live a healthy life. Isaiah 33 verse 24. And in that city, the scripture says, the inhabitants of that city shall not say, I am sick. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's talking about the Zion city of the Lord. He says, and the inhabitants of that city will say, will not say, I am sick. The people who dwell in it will be forgiven all their iniquity. Are you looking at that now? That when it comes to the house of God, the people who are, you know, Zion is Zion is the city of God. The scripture says that you have come in Hebrews chapter 10, I think so. You have come unto Mount Zion. It says the city of the living God. The house, the church of Christ, of his firstborn. You see, into an innumerable company of what? Angels. It says with the spirit of just men made perfect. Our, our fellowship is with all these kind of people. Okay, verse 12. But you have come to Mount 
22, sorry. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So what Isaiah is talking about in Isaiah 3.24, 33.24, is not just Jerusalem, the physical city. He's speaking prophetically. That's why he says the people who inhabit, who dwell in that city shall not. When that time comes, those who are in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, into an innumerable company of angels, he says those people, none of them shall say, I am sick. These are some of the scriptures I saw in my early life and I made up my mind that hospitals, I will only go there to raise the dead. It is a decision I made. No matter how much Satan tries to attack me, I go back to these scriptures and read them and begin to declare them over my life. Amen. Amen. This was the one that changed my life. Exodus 23 verse 25. This was what turned around my life. Somebody say my healing is God's priority. Please shout it. My healing is God's priority. Look at what the Bible says. He says so you shall serve the Lord. Your God. And he shall bless you. He will bless your bread. He will bless your waters. And take away sicknesses from in the midst of you. Around you, there should be no sickness if you are a servant of the Lord. That means your children are not permitted to suffer sickness. That is in the midst of you. Do you understand? He didn't say, I'll take away sickness from inside your body. He said, I will take away sickness from around you. Give me Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 26. I'm trying to remember that scripture clearly. Exodus. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Last verse 26. Help me, Holy Spirit. Exodus 15. Also be your concern. Eh? Don't you think that your health should also be your concern? It is not just up to God. You also have a role to play in your living a healthy life. You have a role to play in you living a healthy life and one of those roles is learning and acquiring knowledge about divine health like you're doing now hallelujah i said hallelujah so god shall heal save me and i shall be saved for you are my praise save me for you are my praise. So it's God's desire that you prosper in your health. So quickly, I want us to look at what are the causes why some of us are not walking in this reality that is meant to be our heritage in God. What are some of the things that allow the enemy to afflict the people of God with sickness and with disease? Number one, it is that sickness and diseases are connected to a life of sin. That's why you will realize that every time Jesus would heal somebody, he will tell them, go 
and do what? Sin no more. Because a sinful life is a gate open for affliction. Jesus will tell them, I have healed you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Look at this scripture I want to show you this morning. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. I just, I want us to, to just be calm today. Then after we finish the teaching, we will now demonstrate the teaching and cast out every sickness from this house. Your amen is weak. I said your amen is weak. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and do what? Depart from evil. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Then verse 8 it says, It will be you fearing God and departing from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. <laughs> Please combine those two verses together if you can. He says, Do not be wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil and when you do so it is going to be what health to your flesh and strength to your bones there is a connection between sin iniquity and sickness There is a connection between iniquity, between sin and sickness. 103 verse 3. Psalms 103 verse 3. Did you see what he said? He says, who forgives you all your what? Iniquities. And then he heals you all your, because there is, there can be no healing until there is cleansing of iniquity most people don't know that violation of God's commandments can open a door for Satan to attack you with sickness and disease so this is the first thing that robs the believer of his you know fortification in God that what has been given to you in Christ can be taken away from you because you broke the edge. Ecclesiastes says, He who that breaks the edge, the edge of fire around you by Christ, he says, whoever breaks that edge and steps out, he says, that one, the serpent will bite. Whosoever breaks the edge, Please look for that scripture for me. I think it's Ecclesiastes 10.5 or 10.4. I don't know. Or 7. Please look for it. So that you understand that whenever you get born again. Do you notice that Satan tried to afflict Job? And he couldn't. So when he showed up in the presence of God. The Bible says God said, have you considered my servant Job? A man that feareth the Lord and eschewed evil. There is none like him. And what did Satan say? He said, no, does Job serve you for nothing? He said, no, because you built an angel of fire around him. That nothing can touch him or touch anything that concerns him. Satan had tried to, to attack Job's life. But there was such an hedge of protection around him. He couldn't attack him. And God said, okay. He's 10 8. He says, He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whosoever breaks the wall will be beaten by the serpent. So, whenever you step out into iniquity, expect the biting of the serpent. Every 
every time you step out in iniquity expect that the serpent bites are you following now this is this is the consciousness i want you to have because many believers don't have it in their head that there is an angel of fire around me the enemy cannot touch me okay somebody is saying pastor that was job i'm not sure about my life <laughs> that was job and so what proof do you have that me i have an edge of first of all he has already told you there is there is there is a war around you so if you break it there is a war around you and you staying in christ is what that what keeps that war let me show you another scripture quickly uh zachariah 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 mazoka kalabo zola bahande zachariah i'm i'm trying to look for a particular verse in zachariah Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. Verse 1. one. Yes, let's read. Please read together with me. Then I raised my eyes and looked and behold a man with what? A measuring line in his hands. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure what? Remember we talked about Jerusalem as the church of God. Eh? In Hebrews 12, 26, we talked about Jerusalem as now the city of God. Look at this now. He says to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is what? Its length. Next verse. And there was the angel, and there was the angel who talked with me, going out, and another angel was coming out to meet me meet him next verse who said to him run speak to this young man saying jerusalem now somebody say the church of god shall be inhabited as towns without wars because of the multitude of men and livestock in it now he's talking about the church okay he's talking about the church so look at the next verse. He says, For I, says the Lord, what will I do? I am going to be a wall of fire around her. And I will be the glory in her midst. I'm just trying to show you that that was not a reality of Job only in the Old Testament. It's also our reality that there is an edge of fire around everything every one of us in Zion are you listening so that you don't come to a place where you think you can neglect fellowship or you can be a vagabond that is just everywhere today you are here tomorrow you are here that's one of the ways you open yourself for attack there's something that happens when we come together in Zion in the house of God the Bible says, I the Lord now will be an edge of fire around the church. And I will be the glory in our midst. Now he says, anybody who breaks that edge and steps out intentionally should expect that the enemy will bite. Is that settled? Is that settled in your heart now? Good. I told you my goal today is understanding. So the first thing that is responsible for attacks in your health is you living a sinful life. So if not for anything else, please avoid iniquity. Avoid what? 
Please excuse my nose today. It's not a demonic attack I was read on. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've told you guys, you have to intensify your prayer for my car. This is as a result of me having no car. That's, that's. So, iniquity will push you to a place where the enemy will find a way to attack you. Number two. Is that, is that okay? Are you okay with that? You're, you're, you understand it. So that now the believer, you should not, it's not about God watching over you. You know that there are things you get into and they open a gate for the enemy to attack your life. That's the same way the, the book of Ephesians 6, I think, is this verse 27 now? Is this 6 or 5? Or 4? Oh my God, why am I forgetting scriptures like this today? Ephesians 4 26. He says, Be angry and sin not. He says, Do not let the sun go down in your wrath. And then the next verse, he says, Neither give ye place to the devil. Because anger has a way. If, if you get angry and sin, sin opens a door for the devil. Do you understand the progression? Anger is not bad. Because God knows that you'll be provoked. Have you ever been provoked before? Husbands and wives, have you provoked yourself before? And you felt like, if I can strangle this thing. Now God is saying, it's okay to feel that way. But if you allow your anger to lead you to where you now actually commit the offense, what you do, it's not that that you, you know, you, you hear people say, let me give this person a piece of my mind now that is when you do that just know that you didn't just give the person a piece of your mind there is a way a place that you have given to the devil in your life the best way to react to anger is to walk away let me give you an example one day my father used to be a very violent man. He would drink and come and beat everybody in the house, scatter everything. So he did that for a long time. And this one particular time, I am a grown-up. I am, I'm, 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 I think I was in form four or so. I am at home and he comes drunk. And he didn't know. At some point when I began to I don't want to use that word. When I began to, to, to ascend in the spirit, my father would come and if I am around, he will not make trouble. But this particular day, he didn't know that I was in the house. My house was somewhere far from his house. And he began to cause trouble. He, he began to... Then I heard my mother's shout. And I came out and I found that it was, he, he had a, what is it called now? A panga. And he wanted to, is it slash now? No, he didn't have a slasher, he had a panga. He wanted to cut my mom's hand. I don't know what got over me. I would have killed him that day. I was so mad. I held his hand. And I was gymming that time. And he's an old man. He's at his 67, 70, now he's 74 now as we talk. He's an old man. I held his hand. He turned pale. Blood could not flow. The, 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 the panga he was holding dropped on my feet. We were not talking. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. I'm holding him. It was left for me to just pick it. But something reminded me that neither give ye place to the devil. So I released his hand. I walked away. I went and locked my house and left.
some of you the reason why you lift up your hand against a, your wife is because you don't know that you are giving place to the devil I was talking to somebody I said no matter the kind of offense my wife offends me today if, if it gets to where I feel like I need to kill her I will walk away with the clothes that I am wearing and never turn back I walk away because neither give ye place to the devil many of us have done that a little provocation. Ah, I will show you the other side of me. Where did you keep that other side of you? I thought the Bible says if any man be in Christ is a new being. He's a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. All things have been made new. Now, this your old, this your other side that you have kept somewhere. My brother, tell us the truth. Are you really born again? Kama kuna kakitu umeweka mahali unaweza okota na ujiekele. And you poke somebody and then drop it back. Where? Your Christianity is different. Very different. Let me tell you something. I used to. I used to. Be very irritable. I would get hungry and my hands would be shaking like this. one time a young man in school i think we were in class five kept on bullying me and bullying me and you know i'm this gentle guy until you get to my last nerve that time not now now i don't have any nerve they are all gone <laughs> see so he, this guy kept on bullying me he kept on bullying me and one day i couldn't take it anymore so I asked him I told him either you choose between you stopping this nonsense or we get into something that you will regret and you know many times cowards have very big mouths alright many times people who are coward they have very big mouths. So he started insulting me. You know those days in, in school, we, we never used to fight in class. Fight was, was programmed. Yeah, we schedule a fight. So we scheduled our meeting. <laughs> and we met. Let me tell you. The end of let me I, let me spare you the details. The end of that meeting is that that guy was in the hospital for two weeks. By the time they picked him from the field, he was not breathing. Be angry and sin not. Another time. This time round now, I was in Form 1. So, they invented something in school that if the bell rings and you are still outside, the people inside the class can lock the door against you and so that the HOD or the teacher on duty will come and find you outside. So, this particular day, I'm just walking on the veranda of the class just having my time now I'm a Christian <laughs> I'm just enjoying my, my life and the bell rang I'm on the veranda so I walk to get into the door and this arrogant young girl closed the door on me so I pushed the door of course she doesn't have the strength to resist me so I push the door the door gets open and then she spits on me you 
yeah you 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 can feel where it is going eh <laughs> it was just one slap she sat down just one and she was on the floor what am i saying there are some things that happen to you and satan is aware that if he doesn't find a way for you to sin, he can't get into your life. So he programs a neighbor who will always provoke you. squeeze so there is a temptation of sweeping it and putting it in the <laughs> but just just know that satan is asking you that this organization it has a way it gets into my spirit and i don't like it so i complain i complain she will squeeze it like, squeeze it like that i will come and rearrange it so that paraventure the next time she picks it her mind will remember that <laughs> but look I saw that I was not winning this fight so I decided in my house there are two tubes of toothpaste <laughs> there is one for the crowd and there is one for me now if you touch that one now something is following you The same thing with ironing clothes. There is a way I want my clothes ironed. And then my wife will iron your clothes. She's, she will iron it in three seconds. It's done. <laughs> it's done. So I lift it with the anger. I look at it. I say, Mama. So I volunteered myself to be the doobie in my house. So I iron my clothes and our own. And I am not complaining. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm not complaining. Is I know Satan was is looking for a key to open it. I'm not going to hand it over to him. Am I incapacitated because I got married? Does it mean if I iron my clothes, I am now a bachelor? No. I move on with life. See. There are many ways to solve a problem. If you resort to violence, it's a choice you made. It's not like you don't you you had many choices. The one you took is your own choice. Amen. Neither give ye place to the devil. Number two, what causes people to open the door for the enemy to attack? is called unforgiveness and bitterness in the heart sickness can attack you because you are bitter at the heart you are unforgiving even though a christian you are unforgiving and bitter that's why sickness is attacking you oh my father did this did that did that my mother did this my sister did this my husband did this my 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 wife did this and you carry heaviness and bitterness in your heart you are opening a door for the enemy to attack you with sickness and disease proverbs 14 verse 30 proverbs 14 verse 30 Give us the New King James Version and maybe see if we will read it gradually. A sound art is like life to the body. When the heart is sound, it is life to the body. But envy, jealousy, bitterness is rottenness to the bones. Give us the CV Version. Okay. 
it is healthy to be content but have but envy can eat you up envy jealousy the heart now i'm trying to show you that what unforgiveness and bitterness does is that it affects the heart and out of the heart flows the issues of life a sound heart will give you a robust body but <laughs> He said, run away emotions. They corrode the bones. Some versions, it looks like the person was sent. <laughs> he says, a sound mind makes for a robust body. Some of us are having ulcers. The ulcers is not because there is a demonic attack. It's that you have bitterness in your heart. You've nursed bitterness over and over again until you resorted to the rottenness of the bones forgiveness is healing please write it forgiveness is healing forgiveness is medicina is healing you can forgive people just for you Keep your heart. Keep your heart from being, you know, open to sickness and disease. Praise God. <laughs> a sound heart. So what, what does it take to keep a sound heart? It takes you. The scripture tells you now. He gives you a, an instruction. He says, guard your heart with hope. If you have a boss that wants to get on, on your nerves every day, he, God is telling you, find a fence. Develop a thick skin against some things. Against offense. Don't carry offense. Because remember the scripture said, offenses will surely do what? Oh, you are not hearing. Offenses will surely come as long as the people you are living around with are human beings they are flesh and blood offenses will surely come your children your husband your boss your co-workers everybody the matatu conductor i mean you just got in the morning somebody and they are talking to you as, as though you are responsible for their emotional well-being you know there are people that are time bombs they are just they are just on the last second of their detonation they are waiting for anybody to just step on them a bit and then boom they explode no expect offenses and prepare yourself to deal with them now let me show you another scripture proverbs 16 and verse 20, 23, 24. Okay. The heart of the wise, my screen has gone off. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. Are you following? Remember in 1320, it tells you that if the life and death are in the power of your tongue right so he is telling you that it is the heart of the wise that teaches the mouth what to say and adds learning to his lips the heart of the wise instructs their tongue on what to say next verse he says pleasant words are like honeycombs sweetness to the soul and health to the bones now when somebody has a bitter heart whatever comes out of them is bitterness and once bitterness is the words that are coming out of their mouth they begin to kill with their words and not give life so you are bitter about your marriage then you begin to talk what is this i married 
You are talking about your husband or your wife. See, if men should be caught, will you also show up? You are talking to your husband. If people should say men, stand up. Will you also stand up? You, 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 the only difference with the, between you and the woman is that you are not wearing a scarf. You are talking to your husband. Now, that is words that are rottenness to the bones. You know, we don't know that some of these things are responsible for the sicknesses we see. And the moment your heart is corrupt with unforgiveness and bitterness, it will begin to instruct your tongue, your mouth, to say things that it's not supposed to say. And whatever you say is either giving life or death to anything. Now you have transferred aggression from your, your husband to your children. Look at you. You are like your father. Because you can't insult the man. You insult him through his children. And this mostly happens to women. Please. Don't allow. Offense. And unforgiveness. Open a gate for the enemy. To afflict you. With sickness. And with disease. Are you learning something? Bitterness. You're just, you're just angry. You're just resentful. You, you don't. Do you know some people have killed themselves because of unforgiveness? Bitterness went to the level where they don't feel the reason why they should be alive. They don't see the reason why they should be alive. And they get to a place where they feel, let me just end my life so that this, this pain can leave me. My friend, listen to me. There is no greater pain than burning without dying. And anybody who takes their life, I don't care whether you take it speaking in tongues or you strangle yourself with Holy Communion, you are going to hell. Whatever it is you use to kill yourself, you will go to hell. And there is no greater pain than what? Burning without dying. You know, I've told you before. Every one of us has an assurance of eternity. The question is where you will spend it. The question is not whether you have eternal life. No. <laughs> you have eternal life. The drunkard in, in the bar now has eternal life. The only thing he does not have is Zoe. It's the life of God in him. He does not have that. Now, the question is not whether you are going to be in eternity or not. The question is where, what side of eternity will you be? For those who have the life of God in us, our sins are forgiven. We will be on the side of God in Zion. But as for you who died because you killed yourself, you drank poison because, you know, there is one thing I have not been able to understand till today. How because somebody broke your heart. I have not been able to understand it. And it's not as though I have not had my heart broken. No. But you see. There is a way. I love me. <laughs> Do you understand? There is a way I love me can't die for another. He's a lie. I've never told my wife I will die for her. Never. It's not a promise. Eh? Jesus did that and it's enough for all of us. We can tap into it. For... <laughs> As in there is a way I love me. I did now somebody broke up with me. I have no appetite. My friend, that's the day I will eat as though you don't know nothing. They say, where I love me. That me and my wife are quarreling. So she brings me food. And I say, I'm not eating. Hey, hey, no. I will eat. Then we continue with the quarrel. Because eating is part of me taking care of myself. <laughs> That's it. 
No. I, uh, me? <laughs> I will ask for more. Then when I finish eating, we start where we stopped. After I finish taking care of myself. There is no connection between our quarrel and food. <laughs> so I don't understand when somebody says, No. There is a way you don't love yourself. If somebody can make you be in the house crying three days. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I should. But you know what Nigerians call Koboko? That long cane that truck drivers carry in their, their cars. And just flock nonsense out of some people. Because I mean, how does somebody make you cry for three days? Has Jesus never made you cry like that? If there is one thing I am rested on is something called the love of God over me. So that if you broke my heart and went away there is an assurance I have that God will in an instant even tomorrow bring a replacement better than you. So I rest in God. I rest in God. Amen. Please, look at your neighbor. Tell them, guard your heart. Yeah, guard your heart. Let me show you something. The book of John 14, 1. Let me show you something. We are talking about the heart. Let me show you something. John 14, 1. Look at this. Please read it loud. Now, the word let not means that God is telling you it is not God's responsibility to keep your heart away from trouble. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. He says, you let not. It is not God's responsibility to keep your heart away from trouble. It is you let not your heart be troubled. How do you not let your heart be troubled? It is by putting your faith in God. The reason why you have trouble is because your faith was in something else. You know, you know the way you can walk into the office in the morning and find a sack letter on your table? I will sing worship as I walk away. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all. Oh there is within me bless his soul because I know God at mimi sasa nianze kutumia employer message za vile ya menivunja ro oh this company will never move forward this is not me I say God bless you sir it was nice doing business with you See you at the top. Yeah, see you at the top. Let me say this off, off the microphone. When there was no there was no quarrel. I just sat down on my lap. that the church has one two three I listed them the assets and the liabilities all of them have it and guess what I went to Nigeria to enjoy myself you can probably think that you will finish Pastor Sam in ministry no no did you call me? That's the major question. Did you call me? Can you take away the grace of God out of my life? Now, if you have no capacity to do that, take me to the desert. I will be fruitful there. I will be fruitful there. Quench 
this and put me I, I will leave her so you know I've told mama it, will, it can never get there but I've told her you know if any day ever comes and it feels like we have to engage in a physical fight that, that day everything I have in this world I will leave it for you and go and start somewhere again because I know I, I, I can be down for a moment but that's not my destiny this is the confidence that you must have that will guard your heart from bitterness no matter what people do to you you know that I am with God and that's what matters amen amen number three what causes sickness and diseases somebody say carelessness please say it loud carelessness some of us are careless careless to the core careless let me read a scripture first before I talk it's about to get rough back on your shift belt Proverbs 24 verse 13 Proverbs 24 and verse 13 please read with me it's projected one to go my son eat what honey because it is and the honeycomb which is sweet to your two things sweetness and good the first reason why you should ever eat anything is not because it is sweet is because it is good I told you some of us are careless what we eat we just eat carelessly zero attention to what the food we are eating could do to us you eat junk all the time and you are wondering why your blood pressure is high you are always feeling fatigued and tired zero attention to your life and to the well-being of your body you don't pay attention to what you cook to what you eat let me tell you something there is food you eat and it is poison in the morning you took tea and bread break time you drank yogurt and smoky at lunch you went out for chicken and, and chips in the evening you had the pizza and coke what you are brooding with that concussion is a bucket of medicine people who live in Nairobi and work in Nairobi please listen to me let people insult you that you carry food to your shop or to your workplace but take care of your body some of you look like you are 60 and you are still 22 I told you to put on your safety belt you are wrinkled because you love sleep. <laughs> no exercise whatsoever. How many of you? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. The question is. <laughs> I hope I got that scripture right. Is it 8 or 18 now? Somebody. I think it's verse 8. First Timothy 4, 8. Yes. For bodily exercise. Profits what? The question is how little is little? 
some of you if a dog should ever chase you you can't survive on a run for three minutes the dog just needs to keep following you you will slam down and die it doesn't even need to have speed it just needs to keep following you you will sweat yourself to death no exercise whatsoever during our family day I, I tried to help my men to do some exercise the following day they were all complaining some of you the reason why your wives are complaining in bed is that you don't exercise I was just looking around whether there are some people that cannot allow me to say what I'm saying your legs have zero strength you have you just eat and just lie on the chair they wake you up go and sleep snoring from the chair you wake up in the morning And you see we are in church and so we are not permitted to talk about this some of these things who told you so i am the one who has the mic now come and take it from me and your wife is telling you oh god something is wrong and you say yeah, nothing is wrong something is extremely wrong go and exercise go 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 and do sit-ups go and do frog jump let me tell you listen listen if i leave myself you see this body of mine you need to see all my, my my siblings my brother is two times me if i leave myself this this stomach will be you know a public opinion but i don't you know <laughs> I, t I tried to engage uh, Queen Elizabeth with a rope and she couldn't <laughs> you know she, she would jump and drop like weight so I, I, I can except now I've stopped I can wake up every morning and do rope a thousand times every morning just to make sure do you know what it takes to stand and teach like this for two hours and i'm walking around like this if somebody was walking straight by two hours do you know where you will be somewhere in 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 juja oh, juja is even close here you will be somewhere close to nairobi it takes strength it takes strength some of you don't want to exercise your body exercise i saw a man calling his wife to come and carry something for him this should take away your beard and put wig on you and you're calling your wife to come and carry because it's too heavy you can't lift it except you married Kojestina Cheng that's the only time you are permitted to do that I mean come on be a man and I'm not just saying that to man even women you just look let yourself lose when you were single ah, you were figure now you have gotten married you have arrived and you're just expanding territories everywhere <laughs> very soon your husband will stop admiring you and you begin complaining before you get there get to exercise and let me tell you you don't need to go to the gym no just right there in your house i downloaded some things some exercise videos for my wife two of us will be on this in the sitting room jumping together exercising following somebody online you you have a phone all you do is to be on tiktok 
then you are walking and you're you're shaking like is see do you know how many listen listen do you know how many people died during covid not because covid was strong because their body was weak i lost men of god but do you know why we lost them they are back in akakama mitaro yawaru mbele anakaa hivi eh in the name of jesus and covid came hit them and they left how many of you have seen i've seen my father you've seen dr paul enenche you see how he looks like that man the kind of strength he has i sometimes ask myself if i can survive the kind of schedule he does on the friday of the crusade he finished preaching at 10 30 went to the lodge sat there for over maybe 30 minutes or so 40 minutes and by 12 midnight he was out again to lead prayers i was still in kasarani i left there at 2 a.m What do you have? So that now, one little thing. Ah, I was so tired. I needed to rest. But you needed to rest. From what? How do you sleep till 10 a.m. with empty pockets? You have no money. At 10, you're sleeping. Please listen to me. I am not. Be careful how you handle your body. Carelessness can take you into sicknesses that you did not bargain for. Some of you can't fast. Can't fast. For three days without compromising. Three oh three, not twenty-one, not forty. Three days. Even when we say okay, just eat in the evening, one meal a day. You can't survive it because you've taught your body food. Every time food, 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 food is affecting you spiritually, and you don't know, and there's nothing you're doing about it. It is because you're careless. Sometimes when I go out, I tell people, please, when you're hungry, tell me. Because if you're waiting for me to tell you, let's go and eat, you will fall on the road. There are many days, the way I step out of my door, that's how I return at 11 p.m. And, you, and I don't look like somebody who has no strength. But some of you, watch a Vikas Asaba Haujakula. Where? <sighs> we will see your intestine from your mouth. You are yawning up and down. You become yani unaanza tu asira hazieleweki nini na ninja uko nayo. Take care of yourselves. Please go get yourself a skipping rope. Go get yourself nice sneakers and jog. Take some exercise. It will profit you a bit. Amen. You know somebody was we were somewhere we were just talking and we got into a discussion of age and somebody so people were now talking and this one said are you you guess how much years they gave me somebody says said I am 31 or or 29 I looked at them and said wow me We can try it. I can give somebody a guess to guess how old I am. Some of you know, so I'm not going to give you the guess. But let me tell you, I don't look my age. And I will never look it. I have refused to. Because I, I, I exercise my body through physical exercise and through fasting
if I leave myself, my body will just expand. And yet, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll send these guys some photos and they will put them there. Then you will see the version of me that is careless. There was a time I was weighing 117. I said, eh. That's a old cow. <laughs> you are saying, eh. some, if some of you should step on the weighing machine, do you know how much you will weigh? And you are saying, ha. How many of you saw, saw how I was looking when I came back from Cameroon? Too much rest. Too much. I mean, I came back with anger in my spirit that I have to shed off this weight. But let me tell you, it is intentional. It is intentional. Some of the sicknesses people complain about is not because it's an attack from the devil. It's because they are careless with their body. They are careless about what they eat. He says, my son, eat honey because first it is good. Some of you, they give you the good food. You reject it. The one that is poison to your body. That's what you want to eat. I made up my mind from 2019. I never take soda. I don't drink soda. I take soda once in a while. Once in a while. I can count this year like this in, with this in my hand and these fingers will not finish how many times I've taken soda some of you that's your daily drink you know what you're doing to your body those who drink ogogoro you know what ogogoro is alcohol and you're a Christian I'm saying that because there are some people listening to me online keep drinking one day your kidney, your liver, they will all start manifesting what you've been giving them. Keep smoking. One day, your lungs will keep, will give you back what you've given them. This is the other habit that is not good. Some of you eat at night, 10 p.m., and then you straight to bed. In fact, Sani na kijiko ziko hapo chini ya kitanda. Ndio ulimalizia. Ulimalizia hapo. You know what you do to your body when you do that? Listen. What what your body does when you do that is that it tells itself that you're in the state of rest. So what does it do? Instead of processing food to what is useful, it packages food as fat. So me I can eat at any time but you can be sure if I eat at, at 11 I'm going to sleep at 3 I'm going to walk out go pray for 2 hours pacing up and down by the time I'm coming back the food is gone but some of you eat and then you eat a lot you have a, a, a whole mountain of food before you and it's 10 p.m. Then you sleep and you're wondering why you're broke and yet you have a tummy. <laughs> so, people mistake you for people who have money so they keep asking you for money and you keep apologizing. Please look like your status. Praise God. It's, it's, you need to cultivate healthy habits. Eat at the right time. Eat the right food. If you have to eat late, don't sleep immediately. Some of you eat with water you bite one spoon you drink
drink bite drink you know what that does to your body you know your body once you you, you chew food and swallow it it's supposed to use the 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 in, in the what are they called the intestinal mucus to rub it into balls so when you drink water alongside food you wash it away that's why you keep having belching like you're having heartburn it's not heartburn you have washed away the mucus in your system that was supposed to rub the food so the doctor tells you you are supposed to drink water before you eat and then wait for 30 minutes because that time your, your stomach would have done that processing then take water so every time you eat after 10 minutes and it's bitterness to your throat because you keep mixing food and water at the same time I told you today I'm going to just calm down and teach you so if you want, if you want to some of you is the way you eat oranges pineapple banana I and food in the same plate especially when you end up share so now i'm going to want to serve you know pity up on a chukua orange pineapple watermelon banana then when i kill him chakula juya yo sahani and some of you have zero ethics you start anywhere you bite the banana bite the watermelon bite the chapati you just you just eat anything Why are you supposed to start with fruits? You are supposed to start with fruits so that they form the base of your food. Because what do fruits give to your body? You need to ask yourself that. Am I helping your life? So if they serve you food like that, that's why organized hotels, they have starter. They don't serve it together. They serve you the starter. You go sit down, finish it, take time, and in 30 minutes time, they say we are serving the main course. Then you go, you serve, you eat, and finish, and stay another 30 minutes. Then you hear, you can now serve your dessert. They know what they are doing. You, you think it's because the rich people are there. In fact, they serve you the starter. You're like, where is the real food? <laughs> where is the real food? What are you guys trying to say? Bring the real thing. They are trying to help your body. And you realize, anytime you eat that way, you eat a lot and then your stomach is still fine. is well with your lives number four so before we get out of that please take care of yourselves exercise something called hygiene can we talk about hygiene before i leave this point that's why i stop something called hygiene some of you are dirty we get to your kitchen right now Biombosiko hapo ni za Thursday. Dirty everywhere. On Sunday I was telling you about people who they are towel two weeks they are still using one towel in two weeks time. Kuoga si usafi. I told you the reason why you wake up tired is because you are sleeping on dirty bed sheets for two weeks. Every time you sleep, your body sheds off toxins through your skin. I have forgotten the statistics now. I, I should have read it before I came. But your, your beddings have toxins everywhere that, they, that the body has released overnight when you're sleeping that's why you're not supposed to sleep with clothes 
Okay, here I come again. Let me look at you. See how you are looking. That's why you don't sleep with suits. Some of you are all jeans. Especially kama you are a person who is a Listen. You are supposed to let your body free to shed off toxins while you sleep. The people who invented night dresses, you know, you notice that they are not heavy clothes. Why are they, they why are they light clothes? Because they allow your body to shed off. There is there are particular fabrics that are used to make night clothes. some of you wake up feeling tired it's because your bed is dirty change those beddings put clean ones and see how you wake up tomorrow morning the other reason is that you ate a lot and slept with a full stomach so your stomach was your body was busy you know your level of metabolism was high while you are still sleeping so you are sweating you are sleeping because your body is trying to break down the food. Nutritionist will tell you take light food in the evening. This is the, the, the I'm trying to remember that the way they say that thing. You know, eat breakfast like a king, eat lunch like a what? A CEO, and then take dinner like a pauper. What that does, does that mean? It means your dinner should be light food. Tea and bread. Fruits. But what you task here? I'm not taking a lima ugali ya kavagara. You won't listen. You won't listen. Let's move. Number that was number four. Now this is number four, right? This is what every one of us now thinks sickness is. Demonic attacks. So every one of us blames sickness and disease to this one. Now demonic attacks could pass through many channels. There are people who have sicknesses that are hereditary. It, it, it flowed in their grandfather. It was in their father. And it's now in them. That through a demonic attack. You're not supposed to inherit a sickness from your father. It's a demonic thing. My God, time has gone. Are we going to even be able to finish what we are doing? So this is, this is, I, I don't even need to talk much about sickness being a demo, as a demonic attack. You know a lot about it. But I'm just trying to show you a few channels through which it could pass. Demonic attacks could also be as a reason of you opening a door for the enemy to attack you. It could be hereditary. It could be uh, issues of, of, of curses. You know, all those things are demonic. And you deal with them with the word of God with the authority that scripture has given you are you listening demonic attacks number number five and maybe the last one rebellion and disobedience rebellion and what disobedience please give us that scripture back again Exodus 15 26 Exodus 15 verse 26 Glory to Jesus. So some of us rebel against God and against kingdom principles. That's why we end up getting sick. Are we okay? Exodus 15, 26. Okay. 
Should I read it from my Bible? This is what the scripture says. Exodus 15 verse 26. Alright. It says, and he said, if thou wilt diligently hear, if you're going to hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in the sight of God. Now you see, it's not just hearing, it also has to do with you doing the right thing. That's why I talk I called it what? Rebellion and what? Disobedience. That you hear the voice of God and do the right thing before God. What does the scripture say? God is now saying and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth you. So there is an attack that comes on you because of rebellion. Because of disobedience. And it's not as though God is, is punishing you. You know, you have to stop looking at it as a punishment from God and look at it as you opening a door for the enemy to attack you. Praise God. Yeah. So it's important that you learn that obedience and walking or living right is a channel for divine health. Praise God. Obedience and what? Walking right before God is a channel for divine health. Praise the Lord. Rebellion against kingdom principles. Rebellion against the ways of the Lord. Rebellion against instructions can take you into the place of sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. So let's let's talk about the basis of our healing. The basis of our healing. How do we appropriate healing? And then we'll pray and go home. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? What is the basis of our healing? And then we pray and go home. Number one, the love of God. God heals us because he loves us. When Jesus died on the cross, healing was part of that which was wrought. Healing was part of that which was wrought by the cross. The Bible says, that God demonstrated his love towards us. Romans 5 verse 8. He demonstrated his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So the basis of our healing. First and foremost is the love of God. So God loves you. That he doesn't want to see you sick. He doesn't want to see you suffer. He doesn't want to see you in pain. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture in Psalms 103 actually called it a benefit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Our forgiveness of sin and iniquity is on the basis of the love of God. Number two, the basis of our healing and our health is our obedience to God. Our obedience to God. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 21. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 21. Our obedience to God. Our obedience to God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 21. Can we, can we be quick with this please? Uh, our time is not with us. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 21. We are reading to verse 22. Do not let them depart from your eyes. He's talking about the word of God. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Next verse. He says, For they are life to those who find them and health to all their what? Their flesh. Don't let the word of God depart from your heart. Keep it in your heart. He says, It is life to those who find it 
the word of God is life. The word of God is health to their bones. Whenever we walk in obedience to scripture, we enter into what? Health. We enter into health. Let me show you a scripture. Isaiah 58 verse 8. You know the entire of the book of Isaiah 58 talks about fasting and the benefits of fasting. Alright? But then he says something in verse 8. He says, then shall your light break forth as the morning and your healing your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the lord shall be your rear guard because of obedience to scripture set free the oppressed set free the captives that obedience brings you to the place where your healing shall spring forth speedily glory to jesus i said glory to jesus number three our base the basis of our of our healing and our health is service to god service to god service to god service to god let me start with uh, job 36 11. job 36 11. he says if they obey and serve him the bible says they shall spend their days in what prosperity all around prosperity obedience and serve obedience and service they will spend all their days in prosperity in material prosperity in health physical prosperity and in spiritual prosperity they shall spend all their days in prosperity if they obey and serve him exodus 23 verse 25 i'm trying to rush so that we can find some place and just pray exodus 23 verse 25 amen so you shall do what serve the lord your god and he will bless your bread and your waters and he shall take sickness away from the midst of you obedience and service obedience and service so when whenever we tell people to serve we are not just telling you to serve because the church has need for you to serve we are it's an advantage to you and service is in diversity you can you know, it is not just when people are singing or wiping chairs that they are serving God. You can serve God through evangelism. You can serve God through giving your money. Praise God. One day Bishop Oedebo was giving a story, a, a testimony, not a story, of a man who had gotten into an accident and he had a metal plate in his hand. And one day Bishop taught on the power of soul winning. And the man caught that fire. He went to his office, took an off for five days to go and do evangelism wow you you take offs to go and attend baby showers he took an off five days to go and win souls when on the day number three he had 108 souls to god while he is in the field the holy spoke or spoke to him and he said go home and lie down and rest while he went home and slept God operated his hand he removed the metal plate and kept it by his bedside by the time he was waking up his hand completely restored and the metal plate was by the bedside by the time Bishop was giving the testimony he was holding the metal plate as evidence see eh? this god we are telling you and serving and talking about is real it's not god is not a mirage god is not a mirage he's not a theory god is real he he can be experienced real life you shall serve the lord which way are you serving god or are you an executive church member you show up 10 15 when service has started everywhere is quiet you sit down honorably one of the reasons why satan couldn't finish david with all his sins and atrocities is that he loved god he served god with his life david would dance not caring whether he is the king and and, and just lose his dignity before god Sakidogo to Nili Wauliza the other day. When was the last time you saw an, a medical doctor as the guitarist in church? 
does it mean that we don't have people who were gifted in certain areas and, and they became certain professionals? When they got into those ranks, they fooled themselves that they have grown beyond service. When was, was the last time you saw a pianist or a drummer in church or the head usher is a professor? Other titles have robbed them to serve God. We must never enter that space. Praise the Lord. Number four. Is that four or three now? Number four. Faith and prayer. Your healing is hedged on your faith and on your prayer life. Because like I said, there is demonic attacks that will come in form of sickness. How do you deal with them? Faith and what? Prayer. Faith and prayer. Faith and prayer. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22. Matthew 21, 22. Glory to Jesus. Faith and prayer. Matthew 21, 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will do what? Receive. Whatsoever things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Whatsoever things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Even healing, you can ask for it in prayer and receive. James chapter 5 verse 6. James 5 16. Sorry, not 6. James 5 16. James 5 and 16. He says, is anyone seek amongst you let him he says confess your trespasses to another pray for one another that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much is there anyone amongst you that is afflicted let him pray let him do what 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 Pray until the healing has been established. Some of us pray for a short while and then we give up. How many of you notice how many times I don't know where he has gone now. Paul has disappeared. How many times I prayed for Paul and for mercy? When, we, when they came to church when we were here, these guys will come and, and just faint. kept praying. It didn't feel, make me feel like I am less anointed because they are sick and they are in church. No. And as we kept on praying, praying, you know, I think it was 2021 or so, I told Mercy, everywhere I see you, I pray for you until this thing leaves you. Today is history. Till eternity. She can never remember. She will never ever remember when last that thing attacked demonic attacks are real demonic, demonic attacks are real but we can weary them away in prayer in service in obedience we can get the devil tired in prayer in service Jeremiah 17 14 where we read he says heal me O God and I shall be healed you have to make it your prayer heal me O God and I shall be healed. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew 8 verse 8. You have to believe. This is, this is for faith. The centurion answered and he said to him, Lord, I am not worthy. Okay, this centurion, let me give you the background of the story had come to Jesus and he said my servant is sick and he needs healing and Jesus was like let's go to the house and pray for your and the centurion replied and said Lord I am not worthy that you should come under my roof but only speak a word and my servant will be what? healed next verse we are reading to that team. for I also am a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this one, go, and he goes to another, come, and he comes, and to many servants, do this, and he does what I tell him to do. Next verse. He says, when Jesus had it, he marveled, and he said, 
to those who followed him as shortly i said to you i have not found such great faith not even in israel speak the word only my servant shall be well it was faith verse 12 oh, verse 11 sorry verse 11 and i say unto you that many will come from east and west and sit down with abraham isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven next verse he says, uh, but these sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I don't know whether I should explain that. I don't have the time to. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have believed. Somebody say faith. As you have believed. He said, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour as you have believed as you have believed the bible will talk in the book of acts and say paul looked at somebody and he perceived that they had faith to be healed he perceived that they had faith to be healed i can almost tell when somebody is ready to receive amen yes as a preacher i can always tell when somebody is ready to receive there's a certain level of excitement that comes on them and you can tell it's time this one I got tired. somebody say faith and prayer so don't don't waste your energy in prayer until you believe did you hear what I said don't waste your energy in prayer until there is faith in place until you believe finally no is it finally yes I think so finally eat well take care of your body good food good hygiene good food good hygiene take care of your body amen i said amen acts 27 verse 33 acts 27 verse 33 let's read and read the next verse want to go read with me as a day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take what? Food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day you have waited and continued without food and eating nothing. Next verse. Therefore, I had you to take what? Nourishment. For this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any one of you. There are those of us who stuff ourselves in the name of I don't know what it is. Eat well. Take care of yourself. Did you hear what I said? No matter how broke you are, once in a while, eat good food. <laughs> once in a while, in fact, the more broke you are, the better food you should eat so that you have strength to labor. Because some of you, eating good food look, feels like backsliding because you are trying to save money and save money and save money. No. Do this, do the other, do the other. Sometimes just look away. One day we were broke. There was no money in the house, as in literally, my house rent was due. The, the landlord is on my head. My water bill was was due. I don't have money to pay. Then I had some little money in my phone. I told my wife, "I'm coming." I went and bought meat. <laughs> That's it. Only the living can pay house rent. <laughs> Cook, let's eat. Enjoy ourselves. Whether we die, let's die. If we live, we live. But I'm not going to kill myself. Some of you, you need to take care of yourself. You work so hard and deny your body the best. I told you the story of the person who removes their shoes because it's raining. 
kutoa viatu kwa sababu kunanyesha they value their shoe more than their leg so they want to preserve the shoe so anakuja trouser anatembea juu ya maji chafu what is the essence of the shoe the primary reason why you bought a shoe is not for beauty is to protect your feet love yourself take care of yourself eat good food and it's not and you know kuna wale nao wako on the other extreme they are owing everybody because they are eating well kwa mama boga ko na deni ya 700 bucharia ko na deni ya sijui ngapi your your husband doesn't feel like anakuja nyumbani mapema sababu anajua you are going to be on his neck kwani kwani ulisema tutawahi kula nyama kwa hii it's just two days old don't be that kind of a woman i'm just trying to tell you don't neglect yourself in the name of trying to save money in the name of trying to make it in life is is it goes a long way just like the same way some of us don't believe in buying nice nice things for ourselves sabuni yako ina manga ina ama kitchen inaingia bathroom inatoka bathroom because you don't believe yani you spend the pesa ununue sabuni ati ni yako kwani nyingine hizi tu uchafu that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about take care of yourself don't go around smelling like bad decisions you <laughs> you you don't have how much does it cost to buy a nice roll on a nice deodorant it's just 200 300 shillings alafu unatembea tu na makwapa zinanuka kama beehive we used to have a guy in, in school his name was morris my classmate there are those people who believe mwanaume ni kunuka jasho no it's not true he won't he won't shave his habits akona msitu Daniel and then you know the school uniform is white shirts the shirts started turning color around his thumb until the shirt is white in front but here is brown i mean and then you want sisters in church to smile with you how you don't brush your teeth once in a while don't just brush your teeth once in a while frost your teeth okay how many of you know what 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 frosting means because it looks like now i'm speaking grammar once in a while frost your teeth. go to the dentist let them remove every food particle that is hanging somewhere in your mouth clean your teeth and, and just smell nice how much is one packet of obit is just 70 shillings and you don't have to eat it it's not so big deal or see at ni akukula every time you feel like you have you you have talked a lot or you have been fasting chew one have some fresh breath what akununuanga to the best that 50 bob si wa ingili i'm just telling you the truth Stop buying 50 bob to the base to paste. It's going to it a brush men lakini it doesn't have the capacity to keep away bad breath from you. And sometimes bad breath is not because you are you anything there is anything bad with you. Maybe you you are fasting depending on what you ate yesterday. Have you ever kept food somewhere and food went bad? Do you know food ferments in your body? Eh? Mwili yako inawezaje kusiaga nyama? Have you ever asked yourself like that? There's there's hydrochloric acid in your stomach. <laughs> so ina mwili yako there's that thing called the bile, right? If you ever burst it in in your meat, you know you can't eat it. Sometimes it's just the concussion of all those things coming 
from your stomach that gives you a bad breath. So what do you do? You take something and chew and keep your breath fresh. You can imagine, you know, especially people who fast and pray, Christians. Mouth can smell. Because you're fasting, there's nothing in your stomach. Your body has been releasing that acid and, and it's coming on nothing. So what do you do? Brush your teeth at least twice a day. Hello. Those of you who are married, please don't just go and sleep. Brush your teeth. So that if, when you come close to your hive, she, she's not feeling like... You understand? Yes. It's very important. See, at this hapa kuna nyama ilikuwa ma Tuesday. Bado iko hapo. Ya Tuesday na leo ni Sunday. It's important to take care of your hygiene. Be clean and let let your health be your priority. Praise God. Take nice good shapes. Don't be Unajua hii generation Z nataka kukaa tu shaggy. Generation ya clocks na socks. Look neat. As a woman look neat. Shave dress well, shower. Men, you know, I've lived with men who don't shower. Liliishi na jalu umoja, ilikuwa inaoga Saturday peke yake. Monday to Friday, anaoganga passport. <laughs> you know what it means, kuwanga passport? Hapa tu. Now, if that is, that's your husband, now you can, you can, you can, you can imagine take care of yourself. Good food, good hygiene. Good food, good hygiene. God bless you. I said God bless you. That's all I have for you for today. Amen. Have you been blessed? Have you learned something? So we will cast out sickness by the power of the anointing and we will also cast out sickness with knowledge and understanding. Okay? So whatever I have taught you, just please when you go back home, pick this sermon from YouTube. Listen to it again and again. Some of the things I have said, then you need to hear them again. You need to hear them again so that they stay in your spirit. Can you stand up on your feet now? Let's make a prayer before God. We have five minutes before we close the service. Lift up your hands and give, give God thanks. Your word has come to me so powerfully. I lift up my voice to say thank you. Are you praying somebody? You're the one God has sent a word to. Can you be grateful for it? Can you lift up your voice and tell him thank you? Tell him thank you. Bless his name. Magnify him. Magnify him. Magnify him. Magnify him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. We thank you for sending us a word. We thank you for instructing us in righteousness. We bless you. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship is holy. Sing like never before Oh my soul Worship is holy I want you to lift up your hands 
and trust God with me for healing right now. Can you pray in the spirit? I want us to pray in the spirit for like a minute. Lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Meanwhile, I'm going to I'm going to lay hands on everyone that is sick in the body. And I'm going to trust God with you that you are going to be healed. The Bible said he sent his word and his word healed them and his word delivered them from all their distresses. No, somebody, somebody lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray in the spirit. Lord, I activate my healing. 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 Shebraski sopra velate. Zando skinte supra katala de uskata. I activate my healing. Shebradeski velazuna. I activate my healing. Wherever there were demonic attacks over my body, over my healing, I declare in the name of Jesus I am healed. By his stripes we were healed. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Shalika para sate la baratis. Sebra stande kato celebra de gadia. Salamana zakatara de gedebosa. Sebra skanta rada kabela sula gadia. Sebra skanta rada kabela sula gadia. Ikoka paso fela de barade. Emma sifende le barakadia. In the name of Jesus. If there is anybody here sick in your body, sick in your body, come. I need to agree with you. If you are here and you are sick in your body, whether you know it that it is a demonic attack or not, I want you to believe God and believe His word. The Lord sent for these words and His word healed them. His word healed them. Zalama Nagada. You are the Lord that He left me. You are the Lord. My healer. You sent your word. You sent your word like he has sent it today and heal my disease. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. My healer. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That healed me. That healed me. I want you to sing that song because you did not come to a man. You came to you God. Are you are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And heal my disease. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Sing it one more time. You are the Lord. You are the Lord that healed me. That healed me. Yes, you are. You are the Lord. You are my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word and heal my disease. Shalabala katapata kaparada kabos. Alako salibra kantele bakasataradaba. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. 
let the healing power of the Lord come upon you now be healed in the name of Jesus I command your body to be made whole be made whole that pain leaves you now in the name of Jesus it leaves you now it leaves you now forever never to return back again Satan lift up your hand of her life in the name of Jesus we command that the powers of witchcraft sickness and disease you have no authority you have no power over her body be healed in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Sadeka Alosi Kempile Sura Raskita Kapalima Sunda Lagadia From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet The healing power of God Receive the healing of God. I command your body be healed right now. Sickness and disease, you have no authority over her body. Let her go. Be healed in the name of Jesus. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. He led Ella Mazika Felades. You are a brass kin to Capella Setamine Habras Conde. Ah, the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I command the enemy to lose your body. Be healed. I speak to the body. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every trace. In the name of Jesus. Out of this body. I command the wholeness. I command the wholeness. I command the wholeness. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are the Lord. Be my Be here. Be Heal me, O Lord. And I will be made whole. And never return me anymore. And Command your nervous Open up. Now I command you, open up. And I wish you are the one I pray. Jesus. You are the one I pray. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. The power of the Holy Ghost, yes, it's coming stronger. Forever be healed. I command your body to be made whole today. Never to return back again in the name of Jesus. I pray from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Yes. Be healed. Power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed. Heal me. In the name of Jesus. I will be healed. In the name of 
Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Rest upon you. And from the crown of your head. Shadabakostika. Shadikapakatos kaparande de bokosada. Aperande skis koporia salati kapalanda gadia. I command you, please. I pray. Use your grip. Satan, you have no place in this place. So from today, be made whole. Yes, Katoka. Be made whole. Be made whole. Forces of darkness, I silence you now. In the name of Jesus. I pray. It is well with you. In Jesus' name. You are the Amen. Friends, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed today? Somebody say amen. All right, give Jesus a clap. Give Jesus a clap. Give Jesus a clap. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give our offerings? Uh, our online people, if you're still there, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and for being live. We bless the Lord for you. Please share the broadcast with your family and with your friends. And let somebody be blessed alongside with us and with you. There are details on your screen you can use to give. Please do so. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. These sermons are on YouTube. They are on our Facebook pages. Christ Restoration International Gospel Center. Uh, Pastor Sam Yaga and then on YouTube. Please, if you need to listen to... In, I think we have over 200 messages on YouTube. You can check and listen to them. Amen. I said, Amen.